this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and today finally we're going to look at the Lenovo ThinkPad Helix. This is a Windows convertible as you can see here, two pieces, keyboard dock, but this feels an awful lot like a real notebook when you dock it together and we have an 11.6 inch tablet here with digital pen support and full HD display and we're going to look at it now. So finally, the Lenovo ThinkPad Helix is here, one of those Windows 8 transformers everybody was looking forward to. And back at CES in January of this year, we had a preview of the device, and it took this long for it to actually get to us from Lenovo. Now, right now, it might look like it's sitting in its little dock, but it's not. Voila, there it is, standalone tablet, or you can use it as a laptop using the keyboard dock here. Now it comes with the keyboard dock, that's standard. I haven't seen it sold separately so far. So what you get is an 11.6 inch tablet right here running Windows 8. We're in the standard desktop UI at the moment. Full HD IPS display 1920 by 1080 coming at you. So very sharp. Also very bright. Lenovo says it's 400 nits and in our tests it was indeed 400 nits, not a drop below. Super duper bright. In terms of color accuracy, we're not talking as fantastic here. 73% of sRGB. That's, that's not wildly great coverage, but it is not bad at all. Some of the, the best displays that we see on laptops like the Sony Vio Pro and the Mac with Retina display are up there at 95 to 100% of sRGB. So for those of you who are graphics professionals, keep that in mind. It's decently color accurate, but not super duper. In fact, reds tend to look a little orange. You know how that goes with IPS displays. Viewing angles are extremely wide. The tablet by itself is not too heavy, 1.8 pounds. That's about par for the course for Windows tablets that have full Intel Core CPUs inside. This is not an Atom or something like that, not a mobile CPU. So computing power requires some cooling and all that stuff. Heat sinks, it's going to weigh a little bit more. All your ports are down here at the bottom. These little locator holes are for the dock to go into. Also, the speaker stereo sound comes out of this whole area. Don't get excited by these trays, which look like an SD card slot. This is just something manufacturers do every once in a while. When they can't fit all the FCC information, they put it on little pull-out tabs. So that's what that is. And there's another one on the other side, which with more UL listing data, all of that kind of stuff. On the bottom here, we have the connector that connects into the dock to transfer data to and from the dock. We have a SIM card slot that is optional. You can get an Ericsson module, 3G, 4G in the U.S. You get 4G also data. Mini display port right here and a USB 2.0 port. There is no SD card slot here. Bummer. Nothing going on on the sides. We've got air vents up top and we've got our power button. You press and hold that for a minute to turn it on. And here's our pen. Now, most models, especially in the U.S., will come with the pen. It has a Wacom digitizer and a little baby Wacom pen. You can use bigger tablet PC pens with this if you want. Like, I've been using the one from my Samsung Series 7 Slate, and it works just fine if you want something bigger. But it is nice. that It's okay size, and you can actually carry it with you without any external doodads, clip-ons, or anything like that. And the back here has your typical ThinkPad kind of finish, the little ThinkPad logo, the light lights up when it's doing something. You can barely see it, but there's a little NFC logo here, and this is where your NFC spot is. 5 megapixel camera on the back. It's kind of nice. Usually these transformer tablets do have a camera on the back. And in front we have a 2 megapixel camera for video chat, that kind of thing. And it's actually a pretty good camera, fairly good amount of light, not too much noise. On this side over here, we have our rotation lock, and we have our volume controls, and there's our headphone jack right on the corner right there. The whole thing feels pretty sturdy and rigid. It's a ThinkPad, as you would expect. I can't flex this thing, and yeah, it's put together pretty well. In fact, I have not even tried to open this up yet. All the internals are inside here. Nothing is in the dock. You've got your hard drive in here, which is an SSD drive. You can get it with a 128, 180 gig, or 256 gig SSD. You get it with either 4 or 8 gigs of RAM. My understanding is that is soldered on board. And if you want to open it up, I can certainly see the seam along the edge here, but I have not torn apart our review unit yet. You can see there's some air intakes over here, and that will have air driven through it by the fans in the dock. When Lenovo first showed this to us, they told us that it was going to run at two speeds, and I thought it was going to be an Intel Y series CPU, which is actually designed to run at two different voltages. As it turns out, this is running on regular ULV IV bridge CPUs. Sorry, no Haswell here. It's probably going to take Lenovo a while to refresh this, given how long it took them to get this model out, so probably it's going to be IV bridge for a while. You can get it with 1.8 or 2 gigahertz IV bridge CPUs, so it's not the Y stepping series. Nonetheless, I benchmarked the two parts separately, and we'll talk about that more in a bit. 
But let's look at the dock, if we can even call that. Uh, much like the ASUS Transformer book, TX300, that we reviewed, this is so much like a notebook when it's docked, it doesn't really feel just like a dock, which implies something that's a flimsy accessory for your tablet PC. It really works just like a notebook. Keyboard, yes, it's 11.6 inches, so you don't have that much room for it. It's a dream to type on. I immediately just started typing with wonderful accuracy. Everything you like about a Lenovo keyboard, it's here. Good smile-shaped keys, a little tactile sound when you click. More key travel than you would also expect. Oversized trackpad, and this is Lenovo's new trackpad. It's buttonless, so the top area here functions as clickers for the track point right up there, and then the bottom area is your regular clickers if you're using the trackpad. Trackpad works well. Generally, Lenovo does a good job with that, and it's pretty large given the size of the device overall. Fairly thin. Again, very rugged, very strong. The usual magnesium alloy inside. Screws to take it apart, but since there's not really a whole lot in here, there's probably no reason for you to take it apart. The interesting thing is this mechanism right here. And you can see it, it's, it's, this little baffle is hiding a whole lot of ugliness, and that's nice that we keep that hidden. And we're going to close it up in a minute so you can see what's behind there. But first you can see here's all the connectors. Notice there's a connector on either side. That's because you can put the tablet in facing forward or facing backward, which is something the Transformer book didn't do. So that's a nice touch so you can actually use it in presentation mode with the display facing away from you. On the back here we have ports. We've got two USB ports, and these are 3.0 ports, unlike the one on the tablet. I don't know why it's 2.0 on the tablet. That's a little bit of a bummer. Not the end of the world, but... So two USB 3.0 ports on either side. Lenovo says they include a USB to Ethernet dongle in the box. Ours did not have that, but review units don't always get everything that they should. This is where the power plug plugs in, and it's using the modern quick charge Lenovo rectangular style connector. It does charge fast. And we have our mini display port right here. So to dock it in, first off, here's the release lever right here. Very easy to use. This has got to be the easiest thing in the world to dock and undock, especially because we have these big locator ears here. To dock it in, and by the way, you cannot move this thing. See this? I mean, I'm really applying force. It does not move unless you put the tablet in, which means it also doesn't bounce around when you do have the tablet in there. So we're just going to drop that guy right in, line up our ears, and it just goes in. Easy as that. And to release it, it's just as simple as that. You can really do that without putting two hands on the tablet, which is nice. And now to give you an idea of the size, we have our Helix right here. And this is the Yoga 11S that's coming out just about now. So it's a lot like the Yoga 11 that ran RT, only much better because this time it's running full Windows. But that's a separate video review. But to give you an idea, it's about the same size, isn't it, as it should be. Similar keyboard as well. Once we do have it in the dock, it takes some force to close it, but yeah, it's not impossible. You probably need two hands though, because if I do this, see, I'm just going to take the whole thing with me. Hmm. But we'll take strong over not. When it's closed, you can see it looks pretty normal. We've got this joint over here, but nothing too obtrusive. Together, they weigh 3.8 pounds. That's one of the challenges with transformers that are running full Intel Core CPUs inside, they tend to be kind of heavy, especially if they have a secondary battery in the dock, which this one does. This is Transformer Book, again, was also kind of on the heavy side, and your alternative is the Samsung Ativ 700T. That's Samsung's tablet separable design as well, and that one's very light and very plasticky, so you're either going to get light and plasticky, or you're going to get really sturdy and kind of heavy. It's up to you what you want. By the way, the Samsung Ativ 700T also has a Wacom digitizer and pen for those of you who need that feature. The ASUS Transformer Book TX300 does not have a pen. So here's our side view. Looks just fine. Back view with the ports, everything on the back looks pretty normal. Not too bad looking. Not stunningly gorgeous, but certainly, yeah, it's fine. Now the weird thing comes right here. So if you pull up this flap, which normally you wouldn't do. You see, here's all the little hidden bits. Here's two fans right here. So the dock adds additional cooling and it pipes air through the tablet to run it and make it cooler. So you'll hear more fan noise when it is docked and it will run at a higher clock speed all the time. Which is, so if you need more performance, you're going to want to have it in the dock. That said, that we only got us not a real huge difference between the, the PC Mark 7 scores for it docked and undocked. With the tablet docked on PC Mark 7, it scored 4505. With it undocked, it scored 4210. So not a huge difference. I, like I said, I was a little bit afraid that the tablet would be awfully underpowered when running by itself, but that's not the case. 
So anyway, fans, freaky mechanism, pretty well hidden away here so you don't have to see them. I don't have too much of an issue with that. It, given how well the mechanism works, how sturdy it is, how easy it is to engage and disengage, and the cleverness of adding additional cooling functionality using the dock, hey, fine with me. One thing I've noticed, when it is running in the dock position, the fans on the dock often run at medium setting for no apparent reason. The CPU temperatures are actually quite low on this in the 40s, sometimes even as low as the 30s, so I don't know why those fans are going, but then every once in a while they'll stop doing that too. It's really quiet when it's undocked, when you're just using the tablet. There's been some discussion of heat with these. Ours actually has not run that hot, maybe because the cooling system is so zealous. I suspect there's some cooling management gremlins that Lenovo still has to work out with this, but this section right here can get pretty hot if you're really pushing it. If you've been streaming HD video for, say, 40 minutes or so, obviously if you're going to be playing games, really, Ultrabooks, tablets, they're not designed to be serious 3D gamers, but if you're pushing it in that respect, running virtual machines, you're going to feel some heat right in this section over here. The CPU must be right behind the back cover in that area. Now, in terms of the charger, the usual compact Lenovo charger, again with that re rectangular connector for fast charging on it, and you can plug this either directly in just into the tablet section or into the dock. Either way, there's a four cell battery in the dock, 20 watt, 28 watt hour, and then there's a three cell battery in here in the tablet itself. Now, though the, the battery inside the tablet itself is a three cell, it's actually higher capacity, 42 watt hour battery. Lenovo claims up to 10 hours combined runtime for, for both of these, and that's actually quite good for something that's running on Ivy Bridge. The Intel Haswell fourth generation CPUs offer significant improvements in runtimes, but so far we've actually managed to go around eight, eight and a half hours without really being skimpy on power management. We've had Wi-Fi and Bluetooth both turned on, brightness set at about 60% or so, and that's in a mix of productivity work with some streaming of YouTube video, a little entertainment there on the side, uh, mostly productivity kind of tasks. Now here's the interesting thing. Currently Lenovo's website lists two CPU options. You can either get it with the Core i5-3427U, that's a 1.8 GHz Core i5, or a Core i7-3667U at 2 GHz, but ours is the i5-3337U that we've seen in a lot of second generation Ultrabooks that are running that slightly updated Ivy Bridge CPU. And the, the one with our CPU is actually available through some retailers like CDW and the like. So. Uh, as to what your CPU options will be by the time you're ready to buy one, well, we'll see, but right now that's where they're at. You can get this with Windows 8 64-bit or with 64-bit Pro, it's your choice. And all models have Intel HD 4000 integrated graphics. Really, there's no way to get a dedicated graphics card in something that's the size and thickness of a tablet. There's just not enough room for cooling and everything that's required for dedicated graphics. Basically, you've got Ultrabook internals inside. Again, very few transformers offer that, and Lenovo knows that. Maybe that's why the prices are kind of steep on this, uh, especially because well-built ones with also a Wacom Digitizer are even rarer. Again, the Samsung 700T, the Smart PC Pro, is the only other one with a Wacom Digitizer and Intel Core CPUs. Transformer Book doesn't have that pen. Transformer Book is also well built. It also has a secondary battery in the dock that works a little bit strangely compared to this one. This one's pretty straightforward. You'll see two batteries reporting. More normal configuration there. No secondary hard drive in the base over here. No backlit keyboard either. That's a couple of points that ASUS gains over this guy, and it's also cheaper too. This starts at $1,679 in the U.S., and you can go all the way up to around $2,200. Ours costs around $1,769, given how it's configured. We have the Core i5 with 4 gigs of RAM and 180 gig SSD. Obviously, the active digitizer with the Wacom pen, which is right here. And we'll take a look at inking now. So here we are in Windows Journal, which is included free with Windows 8 computers, and you can use OneNote 2013, certainly a very powerful application, but since this is free and available to everybody, we're just going to show you what inking is like. And it keeps up very quickly. Handwriting actually looks pretty good, and believe me, I do not have good handwriting. And now let's try converting our handwriting to text. We switch to the selection tool here, highlight it, and convert handwriting to text. And pretty good. I wasn't sure about R versus 1, but that's understandable given the way I wrote it, and it will learn. So you get the idea. It works just fine. You can do delayed handwriting recognition on this. 
No taking is a breeze. It keeps up just fine with my hand. And with this, this is just the Core i5 model. The Core i7 could be even quicker, but really either of them is more than up to the task of no taking, drawing, doing equations, all the kind of stuff you might need to do with a digital pen. Now for your art types, we have Adobe Photoshop CS6 here, and we have loaded the Wacom driver. As I mentioned, this meant for Windows 8, used for a Microsoft Surface Pro as well as for this. And when the driver is in the mood to work, then all is good. And you can see that we have pressure sensitivity here. Light line getting heavier, and so on. So it works just fine, and you can actually do things with palm rejection. See how my hand is on the display right now as I draw my very basic flower pot. And it works beautifully. So there it is, pressure sensitivity in Photoshop CS6, that's via WinTab. So for those of you who use applications that still rely on WinTab, like Paint Tool SAI or Corel Painter 12 will also enjoy this. Again, the, the driver is a little buggy. Sometimes it doesn't load properly and I have to reboot the machine. Even stopping and starting the service doesn't work, but the pen, no matter where you touch, will only show activity up here. So if that happens to you, reboot and you'll get pen working. Hopefully at some point, Wacom will notice that they have some bugs in their drivers and will update them. Since you have a full HD display, you can play full HD video. And are we going to do that with an MPEG-4 trailer? Pretty high quality, high bit rate, and see how it looks and see how it sounds. The speakers are at 66% volume, firing down from the tablet. I'm venting out here. It certainly looks lovely. Not wildly loud, not wildly full, but it's an 11.6 inch device. Can't expect too much. Since this is a business machine, you get the usual Think Vantage tools on here for recovery and maintenance, and the Lenovo doesn't load it with a lot of bloatware. We've got just a couple of things Lenovo's companion support, a quick access to settings they put on Evernote and Skitch, which I won't complain, they're very useful items. And again, these are the Windows Metro version of the apps. You can install the desktop apps if you want. Skype's pre-installed. It comes with Norton Trial on it. You've got some Dolby settings for sound and Microsoft Office Trial. And I've loaded all the Adobe apps on here. It does come with Intel Wi-Di wireless display. We've got a shortcut right there. Now ours comes with the Intel wireless 6205N adapter, 802.11BGN dual band, but Intel also lists the 6235, so I guess it depends on what they feel like building with at the moment, but either way you're going to get an Intel dual band Wi-Fi card capable of 802.11BGN with wide eye support on board. Now, as you can probably hear, the fan has gone quiet. Now, if you leave it in the dock for a while, it comes to its senses and says, hey, I'm not really running very hot. We've got core temp right here, so you can see where the CPU is at right now. Having just played a little bit of video, not doing too much else, it gets a chance to cool down. And the, the CPU temperatures are actually quite cool, around 40 degrees centigrade. 100 is max allowed, so, or 105 is actually max allowed, so we're nowhere near maximum. And it's not too hot to the touch on the back either, so looking just fine. I'm not having problems with it burning me alive. So all in all, it's a, it's a versatile machine. It's a capable machine. At 11.6 inches, it might be small for some folks, but those who really want ultra portables or those of you who have become accustomed to drawing and writing on smaller screens, really, this can be quite comfortable. 11.6 versus 13.3 inches if you actually use it for note taking, for example. It's sturdy as all heck. It has a great keyboard. You can see a keyboard relief right here. It's not bad at all. Not a bad looking machine. It may not be gorgeous, but it's not bad looking either. Usual Lenovo build quality. Also nice that you can order a bunch of different configurations from Lenovo's website. Again, with the pen, if it's important to you, it seems like you, all US versions come with the pen. I haven't heard any that don't, but some overseas may not. Uh, make sure if the pen is important to you that you order the right one. Check Lenovo's website or call them up to make sure the model number you're interested comes with that pen. So it's certainly a solid machine with, with one of the easiest things I've ever used to detach the tablet. It's versatile. You get the Wacom pen. You're kind of over a barrel there. There aren't too many options. You've got Surface Pro, certainly a little bit smaller, 10.6 inches. Uh, for me, that gets to be a little teeny with a full HD display, and I find it a little bit larger, easier for writing and drawing. Again, that's up to you. But Surface Pro, you can get that for $9.99, which is pretty attractive. And this guy starting at around... 
1679 is a lot more money. Likewise, the Transformer Book TX300. If you don't need the pen, 13 inches, a really nice machine, and that one with the Core i7 and a secondary hard drive is going to run you about $1,500. And lastly, we have Samsung Ativ 700T that came out right near the beginning of the whole Windows 8 Transformer thing happening, and it's at about $1,100, $1,200. So, why does this guy cost so much more? You're paying for that great ThinkPad keyboard. I think in a way that Lenovo is aiming at, this, at folks who have been using ThinkPads for years, trust them for using their Wacom pens and love the keyboards, that kind of thing. For those of you who are open to other brands, I think you could save money elsewhere, much as I like the Helix, I have to say. Uh, the one thing that troubles me, too, is Wacom's driver, which is supposed to be the release driver for Windows 8, is a little flaky. Sometimes I have to reboot it to actually get the pen to work properly. So that's the ThinkPad Helix. It's available now, but uh, as I said, it's kind of pricey. Six, sixteen seventy nine going on up to over $2,200. Is it worth the price? Well, that's up to you. Do you need that digital pen in a robust design with a really very good keyboard here? Those are the selling points here, and that's why you might want to shell out the extra bucks. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.